Okay, the video I'm making is about the allelopathic qualities or negative effects that a black walnut has on its surrounding vegetation. People seem to get jobs writing as editors for garden magazines and things just because of their education and um, because they worked at another newspaper or something, but not because they've actually been out and seen these things. They actually take their articles that they've read and just copy them off in their own words and spread them around and before long you've got lies going around. Anyway, the herbicide companies have gone to great lengths, well that's Monsanto herbicide company, to study allelopathic quality, qual allelopathic properties in plants because they're trying to sell their herbicide weed killer poisons to make you think that weeds don't just suck away sunlight, nutrients, and water and crowd out plants, they also push out poisons that stop other plants from growing near them. Well, one of their biggest harps that they harp on is the um, black walnut tree because it contains a juglone, they call it, which is the actual name of the black walnut. Um, they um, claim that nothing will grow around it. But here, here's a very old black walnut tree. Tons of moss, so you know it doesn't kill moss. And around it, it has this is winter, so you're not going to see all the vegetation normally. This is spider warts. They're beautiful in the spring, and they're all over underneath it. And, of course, you see um, privet, which is used as hedges all over the UK and stuff. But right next to this black walnut, you see a, uh, a big hackberry. You see another hackberry. These are baby hackberries that have grown under this. And see, it's shading, and it's actually sold. It's dying out here. And um, you could say that the juglone from the, the, the chemicals from these other plants are killing it, but no, it's, it's dying out. It's still alive over there. That's a beautiful tall branch. It's doing really well. Um, but, but you can see that these plants are doing just fine, including this sycamore. And, of course, all these plants under it. Anyway, this is just one tree. Now, I'm going to show you every black walnut I can find with plants growing around it so you can see that it was not harmed. You also see that there's a gigantic wild grape growing right up this black walnut. I'm telling you, this is a big wild grape. Look at this beauty. This wild grape has been here the entire lifetime of that black walnut tree. And it's, it's actually what's killed the black walnut is the wild grape. Now I see that. Um, I'm making this video because somebody asked me if a kiwi plant could grow up a black walnut or the juglone would harm it. But in all actuality, of course not. If it's not going to hurt a, a big old grape like that, how's it going to hurt a kiwi plant? But I wouldn't put a, a female kiwi up there because you're not going to be able to pick the fruit. But kiwis need a male, so I'd put the male up there. I'd do really well putting pollen around. I mean, I'm going to find you another black walnut. You know, if this doesn't convince you that the whole juglone thing is a bunch of garbage. But anyway, they claim that juglone is really bad about nightshade plants, so I'll have to show you some nightshade plants, but nightshade plants don't grow in the wintertime. You could take my word for it, but of course I have not been able to find anyone that would do that. But I grew some wonderful potatoes, and they're in the nightshade family. Wonderful potatoes under near black walnuts, and those potatoes didn't get potato beetles. I guess maybe there's some truth to uh, some kinds of tannins and stuff that are in leaves that might ward off bugs. So before I make this too long, let me go to the next black walnut tree. Anyway, look at the big wild grapevine. And it's a lot bigger in real life, believe me. Okay. Okay, here's another black walnut that I'm tapping for syrup. And uh, I've already dumped it. Got a little syrup left. Now this right here is Virginia creeper vine. And you see, it's all over the trunk of this tree going all the way up, just growing great. Anyway, it's everywhere, Virginia creeper. Um, yeah, Virginia creeper vine. Very thick and very healthy. Down below the black walnut, there's grasses, even though it's shady. This is foxtail grass. There's some spiderwort. And even here, what's known as gill over, gill over the ground which is delicious and was used as hops in the ancient days of the Vikings before they brought in the, the uh, hops they have now. Hence the name Gill over the ground. Gill has something to do with hops or beer. Anyway, I ran all the way here, so I'm out of breath, but 
you see there's vines growing all over this and it isn't harming the shade loving plants I also have muscanine vineyard see this long vineyard here um, it is all right underneath that and you see it's actually attracted to the black walnut I need to prune these but you can't prune muscanines early in the year until all the cool coldest parts of the winter are over or they'll die from frost damage here in zone 7 but you see the muscanines are growing right up the black walnut just fine and so the whole juglone story which is being carried all over to every magazine every gardening magazine is just a bunch of freaking hogwash it's all it is is hogwash because as you can see, there's vines and everything. Now, as far as nightshade family plants, now this is Perilla Mint. It's dead now. Um, it's an annual. And um, more vines. This is a green briar. It's been chopped down. Because you see, I have horses here. That's horse manure. Um, probably see them way over there. Okay, let me show you some more. Uh, really good growth under black walnuts. Okay, this is a black walnut surrounded by bamboo. Big, huge black walnut. The bamboo has no problems. There's nothing hindering the growth of this garlic. See this garlic? That's real good garlic, elephant garlic, but it's in the winter. You have no problems with chickweed growing under it. So really, even though it's a seriously shade, shady plant, which provides good nuts, you can also see we have both poison ivy vines and Virginia creeper vines growing all along the stalk. Well, not stalk. This is a trunk. I think that this should convince you. But since people nowadays, the pen is mightier than the sword, only believe what they read by editors and authors or whatever, they don't believe what they see, um, this may not be enough to convince anyone that Juglone has no effect. Anyway, there's no effect. I mean, vines all over that tree. Vines all over that tree. Bamboo around it, garlic around it. Let me check some more. Another black walnut I'm tapping. You see wild onions growing under it. River cane, briars, grasses, even though it's very shady. Indian currant, Indian currant, of course, Perilla mint, Shiso, another name for it, wildflowers, honeysuckle, and I've kept the vines off of this one. And of course, lots of garlic. It's winter time. If it wasn't winter right now, this would be a jungle under here. And there's a chestnut tree. Well, not a real American chestnut, a Chinese chestnut. There's another Chinese chestnut right next to it, pear. Another pear next to it, lots of good Bermuda grass turf, which is asleep for winter with lots of weeds. And there it is, right on next to the shade and even under the shade. So you want to believe about a lalopathic juglone and you want to destroy and cut up everyone's black walnuts and encourage that. It's not right of you, but I'll tell you, that's Monsanto for you. They got to sell herbicide. They got to show you that weeds are poisonous to your plants and that many trees are weeds so you need to get their tree killing poisons and stuff i don't know why they they don't research these things but if you just go out in the woods and look for yourself matter of fact the the hundred year old men back in the 70s told me how they used to go under black walnuts just to get ginseng because it grew so well under that rich soil that black walnuts make Here's another black walnut being tapped. It's a great big giant. And if you notice, it's got wild grapevines also growing in it. I chopped it off because it would have killed my black walnut. Anyway, right here next to it is a big fat trumpet creeper vine. And you see honeysuckle, which is evergreen in the winter. I love Japanese honeysuckle because it feeds the wildlife when there's nothing else out there for a herbivore to eat. See, it's really barren in the winter. Not too many things grow here. 
That's why so many animals became extinct at the turn of the uh, modern gun, because there wasn't all these exotic plants for animals to eat and the habitat wasn't as vicious. Hey, there's an eagle flying up there, but I doubt you can see that. Anyway, this is honeysuckle vine, growing right under a black walnut. So I, I think I've put out enough here, but I'll keep showing more. Also, this is a trumpy creeper, which I've tried to kill off my black walnut, and you see it made a whole new baby shoot growing up. Wait, that's not trumpet creeper. That's poison ivy. I don't get poison ivy, so I can handle it. But that's poison ivy going up it. So you got that vine as well. This is the giant black walnut that I grew potatoes under. Anyway. Oh, look at that. See, there it is, and I'm tapping it for syrup, which is good. Anyway, this is a turnip. See? It's just a baby turnip, because it's winter time. And I didn't plant it at the right time of the year. But it's growing underneath the black walnuts. And the deer haven't eaten it. And you see all these other weeds that were here during the summer that are now dead and dry. But see the size of that? That giant thing. And look, it even has a vine growing on it. See? Nice healthy vines. So I'll pull those off pretty soon. And then there's my blackberries going down there. So I have no problems with black walnuts. The allelopathy doesn't really exist. And before I had these muscadines here, which are growing fine under black walnuts as well, because this is a whole black walnut grove right here. These giant vines of muscadine here, going all the way down to the moso bamboo, this was all potatoes at one time I tried. I made the row straight down that way. And they all got potato bugs, except right under there, below that big 100-something-year-old black walnut tree. I don't have a problem with them. You read it in Mother Earth News. You read it in Organic Gardening Magazine. And those are not written by the same people they used to be written by. The new people who write those are probably living in an apartment in a big city like New York or someplace where maybe Trump comes from. They don't know a thing about the animals, the wildlife, or how they have to be protected. They don't care about anything but writing a story they copied from somebody else that's going to get the article printed. And if they try to do something like this and say, hey, maybe black walnut juglone is overrated and isn't real. And see, I've even crushed the walnut hauls out here. This is where I do the walnut hauling. And I still have. Even right next to the hauls, plants are growing in the woods in the winter. This is a baby um, vine called a gill of the ground again. And there is some nut grass and wild onions and fescue grass and other kinds of grass. And there's orchard grass, more orchard grass. Anyway, here's a wildflower. Now if it was summertime, I'll show you some um, nightshade family plants. I'll do that. I guess I have to make another video. Anyhow, as you can see, vines are growing up it. It's not hindering the growth of anything. Now you know that no, no tree uh, doesn't cast shade. I mean, here's a red bud. And look under it. There's nothing growing under it, and it's a red bud. You don't hear anything bad about red buds. You see, there's nothing under here because it's too shady. Well, there's a little bit of buffalo grass. Anyhow, I don't think I need to show anymore. This video is going to be too long and boring, but I'll go ahead and go over here. Here's some pasture. This is a pecan. Never has done too well because it gets grubbed up by the pigs. But see right here, this is a little black walnut among a whole grove of black walnuts. And here is a vine. This is grapes, wild grapes. Doing just fine in here, even though I've hacked them down a lot. And here, this was called hairy leaf overcup, and it's in the sunflower family. And now it's dead for winter. You see all this growth underneath these black walnuts, even though they're shady. There's a trumpet creeper vine trying to grow, and here's a fig tree. There's a fig tree right next to that black walnut. This is a fig, and this is a remnant of a 
giant ragweed. That's giant ragweed. And uh, you see, black walnuts. But you can, uh, can believe me or you don't have to believe your eyes. There's no such thing as a lelopathy in a black walnut. It's garbage. I'm telling you right now, it's garbage. And here's some henbit. Now remember, this is the middle of January. There's nothing growing this time of year, except in my garden. But you see, black walnuts. So you don't really need to believe everything you read, because it ain't true. Isn't true, whatever. I gotta show you, middle of January, my garden is still thriving. I've already picked the daikons, but I still have plenty of kale and plenty of big rutabagas, big turnips, lots of beautiful mustards. It's quite a beautiful garden. It's completely organic. Completely. Anyhow, and I use no poisons. Not even organic poisons. I did try neem for a while. didn't notice it really working. Um, kind of smothers the plants, but I'm real proud of this because I can eat lots of greens and they look better than the stores. Okay, bye-bye.